I have a goal. I would like to be the world's greatest father. And every day, I'm working towards that goal, working towards becoming the world's greatest father. Yes, it is an ambitious goal. And yes, it requires a lot of hard work. But in my mind, it is worth it. Today, I would like to share with you my story, my journey, and how I intend to achieve my goal. And my story starts in 1997. I'm expecting my first child, and I'm so excited. I can't wait to become a father. And I remember, I'm at my apartment, and I've got a lot of baby clothes, and I'm getting ready to be a father. And I remember, I'm ironing those clothes, and I'm thinking about, I'm going to be a father. And I said to myself, I am going to be the world's greatest father. But it's easy to say, and harder to practice. Because if you think about it, being the world's greatest father is not a well-defined goal. It isn't. I started thinking about what does it mean to be the world's greatest father? Is it waking up in the morning, baking pancakes for the kids? Is it going playing with the kids every day? Is it buying everything for them, everything they want? Well, no, I need to define my goal. So I started thinking, what will I be doing? I will be raising a child. What is it that I will be doing? And I found out I am not going to be raising a child. I am going to be raising an adult. What I mean by that? is that everything that I will be doing while my kid is growing up is trying to have an impact on what type of a person my child becomes. And when I say what kind of a person, I'm not talking about jobs or wealth. I'm not thinking about, oh, I want them to be a banker or my child should be a doctor or anything like that. I'm talking about values. I want my children to adopt certain type of values that will define the person they will become. I want one day to be gray and old, and my kids come as adults and visit me, and I'm so proud of the person they have become. Still talking about values. So I needed to de define my goals, and what I did was I created a vision, a vision of the person I wanted my child to become. And I did it by looking at myself, and I thought, what is it that I do well? What is it that I'm proud of? What is it that I'm really proud of, by my, of myself? And I'm still talking about values. And I took that, and I put it in my vision. And I thought, looked at myself and thought, what is, what is it that I'm not doing so well? Which values have, haven't I adopted that I would love to have adopted? And I put it in this vision. And this vision comes to a description of the person that I would like my children to become, and this vision becomes my goal. I start to work towards becoming this person. But wait a minute. What happened here? <laughs> I was talking about my children. All of a sudden, I'm talking about myself. I want to achieve this goal. What's happening? Am I selfish? Maybe. I don't know. But I know one thing. The only person I really can change, I really can control, is myself. That's the only person but I can try to influence my children. So I believe by working towards becoming this person that I have described, I'm sending a strong message to my children. I'm a good role model and sending a strong message. What I figured out, I needed something. I need some tool to really send this message to my children. And I started looking and I found out I have this tool. We all have this tool. It's called interpersonal communication. And what it means is it's not only what I say and how I say it to my children, but mainly what I do that will be the strongest message to my children. So I found out, okay, what I have to do is I have to start living my life by one very simple rule. Everything I do is a direct message to my children. If I don't want my children to drink, I don't drink. If I don't want my children to smoke, I don't smoke. I can't expect my children to be something that I'm not, or do something that I don't do. Well, or at least be something that I'm trying to be. So this is what I have to do, live by this rule. Everything I do is a direct message to my children. But I need something more because 
One thing is sending the message as that. I have to be sure that the message will reach to them. So I found out, okay, I will have to work on my communication, our communication, every day. And I know that luckily I will get a lot of chances. We all get a lot of opportunities to work on our communication. And I have to be awake and aware and grab those chances every time to be able to send the message and be sure that the message gets through. I'm going to explain this a little bit better. I'm the kind of person that likes to visualize things. And this is how I see my communication with my child. I'm here. My child is here. And between us is this huge tube. I call it the communication tube. And my job is to work on the communication tube to see that it's wide open. Because through this tube, I will send my message to the child, to my children. But not only that. It works both ways. This is also where they will send messages to me. And this is also where they can come and seek guidance and seek help. So this is very important to me. I will have to work on my communication tube. Complicated? Maybe a little. I will explain it better. Let me take an example for you. When my daughter was four years old, she made a drawing and came to me with this drawing. Says, Daddy, look, look what I drew a great opportunity for me to work on my communication tube, but also really easy to mess this opportunity up. So, what could I do? I could take the picture and say, yes, but you could draw this a little better. You could put a little bit of color here. What am I doing? Focus on the picture. I'm judging the picture, no focus on the child. This is not what I wanted to do. I don't want to do that. I want to send a different message. I could also just take the picture. What a lovely picture this is. I'm going to put it on my fridge. Oh, I love this picture. Again, focus on the picture. What about my child? So what I did, I went down on my knees, which is probably why I have six surgeries on this knee. But I went down on my knees to be an eye level with my child. And I started to ask her about the picture, how she felt while she was drawing the picture. Because I wanted to make sure Focus is on you, not the picture. The picture is just a side product. How do you feel? And I'm sending a strong message. I'm sending the message, I am interested in you. You can come and talk to me. I'm interested in you. I'm working on my tunnel. I'm going to take another example that's happened more recently. My son woke up one morning and said to me, Dad, I cannot go to school. I have so much pain in my stomach. Well, I'm an expert in my child. <laughs> and I was pretty sure there was nothing wrong with his stomach. But I have a standard answer whenever one of my child comes and says they can't go to school because they feel bad. And that answer goes like this. No problem. You will stay at home. Yeah, I know that <laughs> you don't all agree with this. Let me explain what I'm thinking and why I do this. I'm sure that the reason for my child to come and say this to me is there is a reason behind it. He doesn't want to go to school for a reason. And me as a father, that is my job to find that reason so that I can respond. And I have to know the reason. That is why when I say, no problem, you will stay at home, I'm taking the pressure off my child. There's no pressure. I don't ask him about his stomach and what happened or even start saying, ah, oh, I don't think there's nothing wrong with his stomach. No. I only say, what can I do to help you? What can I do for you? Do you need something to eat? What is it that I can do? Because I know there's a reason. And no reason is not important to me. They're all important. Because you could easily say, well, what if the reason is just he doesn't want to go to school? School is boring. That's a reason for me. In my mind, my child should not find school boring. I need to find out, okay, why does he fi find the school boring? Is there something wrong? Doesn't he have a friend? Is there some social problem? What is wrong? I would need to address the problem. So that is why I need to find the reason, and that is why I take the pressure of my child by saying, no problem, you will stay at home. And you will know what happened? In five to 10 minutes, he comes to me and says, dad, the real reason I won't go to school is there's a big boy that's going to beat me up. I had my reason. I had my job. 
and I could respond. So I called the teacher and told the teacher about this. And the teacher talked to the big boy, solved the problem. My son could go to school the very next day. But the most important thing about this story is the message that I'm sending to my child. And that message is the most important message that I can ever send to my child in my mind. And that message sounds like this. Come to me. I will listen. I will take you seriously. And I will respond. Can you hear it? I'm opening up the communication tube. I want to send this message every time I can. Come to me. I will listen. I will take you seriously. And I will respond. Because that's how I make my tube wide open. And if I would start to say, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just bored at school. You have to go to school like everybody else. School is important. Go to school. But which message am I sending? I'm not really listening. I'm definitely not, not taking him seriously. And I'm not responding. I would be closing up the tube. And if I would do that, which reason, what reason would my son have whenever he had the trouble or problem or needed to send me a message or needed a guidance? He wouldn't have any reason to seek to me. No, I've already given him the message. Oh, this tube is closed. You don't talk to me. I don't listen to you. I don't take you seriously and I won't respond. So that is why this reason, this message is so important to keep the tube open so he can seek to me. And that's exactly what happened. When my daughter got bullied, she came to me through this huge tube that I have opened between us. And she came to me for guidance. What can she do? She came through the tube. But there's a slight problem here. I have no experience in being bullied. I have never been bullied. What should I do? I can say, well, when I was bullied, I didn't know. Never tried it. But that is when my vision becomes my toolbox. Because what I can do is I can think, I can imagine, if I have already achieved my goal, if I'm already this person that I want to be and adopted all those values, how would I respond? What would I do if I was bullied? So that is where I found my guidance, my help, my advice for her. What I did is I said to my daughter, what I would do is I would answer the hatred with love. If somebody says to you, oh, you're so ugly, and say to them, oh, I think it's sad that they think I'm ugly, because I think you're cute. Answer the hatred with love. And that comes from my toolbox, which is my vision. And you know what happened? I can see today, my daughter is already a person that answers hatred with love. She is already, she's already adopted that value. Me, I'm still working on it. I'm going to be there. I know I'm going to be there, but I'm still working there, working to get there. And what I can see today is both of my children, they have adopted a lot of values that I have in my description that I, have, I haven't. I'm still working to it. They have both passed me by. And that is when it comes clear to me. A new goal has emerged. And the new goal sounds like this. I want my children to become better persons than me. I don't want them to, come up to, be, to become a new version of me, a meaning me. No, they should become the person that I don't reach, that I don't, can't be. They should be a better person than me. So that's what I believe. And I believe that this way, that will be my contribution to a better world. And that will be how I will reach my goal to become the world's greatest father. And my challenge to you is if you haven't done so already, already, go home, create this vision. And if you start thinking now, well, I don't need to do this. I don't have any child. Well, believe me, working on becoming a better person and working on your communication will help you everywhere. At your job, with your girlfriend, wife, Work everywhere, everywhere. But back to my challenge to you. Go home, create this vision. Start working towards becoming this person. 
If you have children, watch how they will pass you by. If you don't, go home and make them.